Good afternoon and welcome back to Gulfstream Park. Thank you for joining us here on Gulfstream today. I'm Gabby Gaudette, joined by Ron Nicoletti and happy St. Patrick's Day. Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning <laughs> to you too, my dear. <laughs> Thank you very much. We've got a, a lot of racing action here today and hopefully someone has a little bit of the luck of the Irish in trying to take down this uh, Rainbow Six as we continue to grow with that carryover. And there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, isn't If you there? look at the logo, it's all about <laughs> the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And if anybody's going to hit it, maybe it's today on St. Patrick's Day. I was thinking about having Lucky Charms for breakfast, but I didn't go that far today. Yeah, well, we had Irish cookies from... Uh, we did. We did have Irish cookies, so hopefully that's a a good uh, omen for the rest of today. We'll take a look though at our featured wagers and our carryovers and it all starts in race one. We do not have super high five wagering in the first race, but we do have that 50 cent early pick five. I know you came up with the ticket, which we'll get to in just a little bit. Race two on today's card does start that rolling super high five. So do take note of that. No carryover in that wager today. Race six on today's card kicks off the 20 cent rainbow six, 3.38 million in that carryover. Races six through 11, a lot of money up for grabs there. And once again, we do have that mandatory payout the following Saturday, so March 26. And on race seven today, we do have that 50 cent late pick five as well, which we'll talk about later on today's program as well. But let's start it all off with race one and early money goes to the four, a place to shine, even money on the morning line. Yeah, I have the, one of the, the horse on my ticket. I went, uh, you'll see my uh, early pick five ticket pop up. I went with the three and four. I actually have the three on top of my ticket, but I also used the four. Three deep, three deep, two, and then three, $54. Had four out of five yesterday, but the problem is it pays five out of five, so I did not <laughs> win it. But, so maybe we get a little bit lucky today, a little luck of the Irish. And we, like I say, two here to start it off with Abatari and the four, a place to shine. I had four out of six, unfortunately, in the pick six. Unfortunately, they don't pay four out of six <laughs> either there. Yeah, I've, I've got a little bit of Irish, so hopefully mm -hmm. that, that is Nicoletti Irish. There's no Irish in Nicoletti, <laughs> but uh, like today, we're all, like today. <laughs> we're all Irish today. We're all Irish today. Doesn't sound like it. We'll look at the race one on the card and the four, a place to shine does figure to be the horse to beat last time out on that sloppy sealed going was a runaway winner by 13 lengths now was uh, a sh the short price favorite and did deliver first off the claim we haven't seen her in a couple of weeks and now uh, dropping down to the 12,500 level well, a repeat of a last crushes this field mm -hmm. it's very simple in there but I, I had some questions that's why i went to the three abatari making the third start of our current form cycle after returning from a layoff to defeat 12-5 maidens uh, and then follow that with a second place finish at this level and distance so good form there for that horse the four a place to shine i couldn't leave it off the ticket I, yeah, Avatari, I, I was a little bit suspect of that last race, but I agree with you. This is the one horse that you have to use in order to try to beat your short price favorite because she really did have full opportunity to beat the horse that was on her inside. The inside horse actually fought back. Now, was the inside runner that game or did this filly just not have the will to win? That was a little bit of a concern. And uh, the previous jockey it, it did absolutely nothing wrong. I mean, he rode this filly to perfection, but sometimes change is good. And now Louis Saez is in the saddle today. So, yes, I, there's not much to say between that. But if there is a potential pace duel, I thought the seven, Senora de Fatima, could be kind of sitting in the catbird seat. She is a slow plotter, but the mile should obviously suit her well, and maybe she can make a late run. Yeah, and I had Dra Dolly on the bottom of my ticket. Liked it more when there was a 10-pound uh, apprentice on it. Now we'll carry Lionel Reyes at 121 pounds. Just thought with the lightweight, this might have a shot in the first. Dr. Dolly. Doc we had the... Doc or we looked it yeah, up. We had this conversation. Race two on the card as we move on for this $30,000 non winner of three lifetime event, a mile and a 16th onto the turf course here. And uh, we do have a replay of Mexican Groove, who did get the victory last time out, trained by uh, Mike Maker here. Joel Rosario was aboard that day. Now Javier Castellano does pick up the mount. And she does. he does seem like a horse that potentially could be a little bit pace dependent. He kind of needs everything to go his way. And I thought uh, Joel Rosario rode this horse to perfection. He made a perfectly timed move. But I thought it was also very strong because the pace was really holding together. So he was kind of grinding out a move from off of it. And I thought if we look at some statistics for the Mike Maker Barn 2 over the past five years with last out winners on the turf, 
The barn is strong, 30%, 57% in the money, and still a positive ROI. Yeah, I mean, up there at $2.53. The only concern I had, and, you know, I just couldn't leave the one off the ticket. Back on February 17th when that race was run, the, the turf course was favoring horses that ran like that, but he did run very well because the pace, as you said, stayed there. With that, I flip-flopped our, our top selections. I went with the eight Moonlight Bandit. Dropping into this uh, thirty thousand dollar condition claimer, returned from the freshening track, solid early fractions in that race, weakened to finish six, beaten two lengths against fifty thousand dollar optional claimers. Mark Cassie, Julian Leperu, and if anybody's figured out this turf course, it's Julian Leperu. So our exact flip flop. And this horse will be tactically placed, I think, closer to the front end, which it will help him. And I agree with you. Mexican Groove, when he did win his last race, it was on a turf that had a little bit of give to it. We haven't had rain for several, for a couple of racing cards, especially a couple of weeks. Uh, so that's something to consider. Now, looking at some of the horses who did he did run against last time out, he was beaten a little over two lengths against a tough condition last time. But we did see Vinny White Shoes come back in a very subpar performance yesterday yesterday so that's maybe a concern but you do have to look at the field that he beat we saw via uh some other horses that he did beat uh, back at Gulfstream in december he's strong i respect him as well he, and i think that outside post position shouldn't be too much of a problem at a mile and a 16th beyond that though we did use the five are we not men who's another one who should be forwardly placed in this event yeah, and he uh, you know you guys stretching out an additional 16th mile he uh he returned from an 11 week freshening he ran fifth against similar going a mile, a Phil Serpy, Nick Juarez, a previous winner at the distance, so I just threw it on the ticket. And you look at the pace scenario, too, because we do have Ginger Goose, who should be uh, pretty forwardly placed. We do have Are We Not Men, who will be close, and even Moonlight Bandit to the outside. So that's why I kind of had a little bit more confidence in Mexican Groove that he could be a repeat winner, because there it, it should be a pretty contentious pace up front. And you got Javier Castellano, so if anybody's going to figure it out, it should be him. Of course, race three on the card an open $50,000 event, a mile and a 16th on the turf course, and the seven quiet force, first off the claim for trainer Peter Walder, nine to five on the morning line, attracting the likes of Javier Castellano, and uh, should be decently, if not heavily bet there at the window. Yeah, he moved to the Peter Walder bond via the claim, stepping up to this level today after returning from a layoff, defeated $35,000 maidens. That was going a mile, it was on a good turf, but we got a stat we want to show you from Peter Walder over the last uh, five years. Uh, he is uh, 3 for 24, 13%, 29% in the money, only a dollar nine ROI. First off the claim with mid-level claimers on the turf. So uh, there is cause for concern there with the number seven, quiet force, if you believe those numbers. But a uh, trainer like Peter Walder, there's still a percentage where he can win. Yes. And you look at trainers and they all have their strong suits. They all have their key attributes. And Mike Maker is a solid turf trainer right. through and through, whether they're stake sources, whether they're claiming horses. Peter Walder is very good with his dirt sprinters, dirt routers. He's excellent. That's why he right. continues to win races. So he's claiming off of a very high percentage turf barn and trying to maintain the sources for him. So that's why I thought that he could potentially be a vulnerable favorite. But I do respect him still. I couldn't put him any lower than second here. The four sports caster, if he gets to his back numbers that he was running here at Gulfstream last year or even at Churchill in the latter half of the, the spring, uh, I thought he could be very competitive because you look at his race last out on the 8th of November. That was at Churchill over that yielding going. And I said this at infinitum that there were a lot of horses that didn't like that particular turf course in uh, the fall at Churchill. They came down here to a firmer going and they kind of had a new a new life of uh, a new light of life there. So I'm hoping that's the case. But yes, the concern is the layoff. Yeah, the layoff is actually a concern. Easy for me to say. But you're right about that. The, uh, the A lot of horses did not run, run well on that uh, surface there. Number six, Gray Bow, six previous races on the turf with two wins in the third, is going back to the grass after I thought a game $62,500 optional claiming score going seven furlongs that was on the tape tampa main track john vincent manuel cruz uh, back in south florida to handle the surface switch this afternoon okay we'll move on to the fourth race on the card an open thirty five thousand dollar race a mile onto the main track and th the field stays intact and we have two horses coming out of the same race or at least competed against each right. other. One of them is the one he's cotton. And we'll go and look at the uh, break actually of that 
uh, particular race there on President's Day, the 15th of February, and immediately exiting the gate, Golden Ray was completely compromised. He stumbled coming out of the uh, starting gate there. His nose grazed the ground, not to mention he was also extremely wide. Now you go into the final turn and we see he's cottoned down on the inside here under uh, Gerardo Corrales. Ron, this was not the best place to be that day. You see several horses making moves on the outside of the track, and he is just glued to that <laughs> rail. And that was a time frame between, you know, the middle of February where the rail did have a tendency to be a little bit slower, a little right. bit deeper. So that's why I kind of think that he's cotton will still really hold his form because he was still closing on the worst part of the track that day yeah he absolutely was and it just looked like he was running in place and on a particular day as the horses went by him i do have him on my ticket you have him on top i have him in second i did go with the horse you have in third on top and that's half ton of fun it's the number five who broke his maiden on the dirt for a thirty thousand dollar tag at churchill downs in november now goes back to the main track he's wearing blinkers today he went up he pressed the pace he faded was thirty five thousand Optional claim is going seven and a half on the grass. Joe Sharp, Corey Lannery handling the surface switch this afternoon. Lots to like about this off going turf to dirt. I thought it was a logical choice. All the reasons you mentioned he's cotton is why it's on my ticket. He could make a, a, a lateral move there. I, I just wonder how strong that maiden uh, claiming event was at Churchill. He didn't hold form then going up to Parks, which I actually take as a positive because Parks can be a very, very difficult course to like and a lot of the times if you like it it doesn't translate to other tracks and vice versa so perhaps we'll see more of a performance as he did show at Churchill but a couple different ways to go the three golden ray is the horse to beat on the class drop he faced <laughs> great Mo Heyman last time out in the <laughs> fountain of youth but sometimes you have to question when horses do take such a significant step up in class what kind of um what kind of factor that has on their confidence level? Yeah, I really thought that horse was tilting windmills in the grade two fountain of youth, and you saw the stumble in the race before. So uh, in a logical spot to rebound, we both have it on our ticket. Race five on the card, a maiden $25,000 event, a mile and a 16th onto the main track. And uh, the eight, Pizzotto Solo, is one for trainer Dave Fox, who comes in to this race, gets a little bit of added distance to the two turns, and should be able to show a little bit of speed, and I think one to respect. Yeah, he's stretching out to a mile in the 16th. After that promising uh, one mile career debut in which he went up, as you mentioned, he chased the pace, he finished second, but that those two were much the best winner that day, Texas T, going a mile. Nobody was beating Texas T in that race. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That was a nine-length winner that day. But uh, talking about the six after Cheyenne in here, too, I prefer the six a little bit over the eight Pizzuto Solo because I do think this horse will like the two turns. He doesn't really have a lot of natural early speed so now a mile and a 16th should suit him. Not only that, Ron, and it does say in the short comment he was bumped repeatedly at the eighth pole. I didn't really see that, but I did see the fact that he was on the worst part of the track <laughs> that day. Again, I'm taking the angle where a, the course had a tendency to be faster, a couple strides out from the rail, and this horse was really glued to the rail. And I like the fact that Emisiel Jaramillo gets in the saddle because he has just been riding lights out lately on any surface. Uh, and I think the horse last time talking about after Cheyenne couldn't get away from the rail. He yeah. was just boxed in exactly. there and then he just sort of, you know, went to the inside. So it wasn't that the, you know, he just got, the, you know, racing luck got mm -hmm. bogged down on the inside. And uh, I agree a wholeheartedly there, but I went back and looked too. I didn't see the bumps. Bumpy. Uh, I mm -hmm. just saw one, you know, when he ducked in a little bit. So after Cheyenne on my ticket too. All right. And that is uh, between the six and the eight, hopefully. That happens there, but that's races one through five. And with that said, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the rainbow six that carryover continues to grow. And hopefully we can find the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Get the green, baby. <laughs> Get, Get the, the green, green right <laughs> after this commercial break.
Welcome back to Golfstream today. Gabby Gaudet joined by Ron Nicoletti here to try at least attempt to tackle the 20 cent rainbow pick six. We do have a $3.38 million carryover today. Once again, that mandatory payout will be on March 26th if it is not hit in the meantime. And we'll take a look at the sequence. I did come up with a ticket. Couldn't find a single though. I thought today's sequence was very tough. And we started out with three horses, two, three, seven, with seven, 10, 11, just seizing two horses in the following two legs of the sequence in races eight and nine, and then capping it off with three horses, respectively, in races 10 and 11, three, five, eight, eight, seven, 10, $64.80. We'll take a look at the sequence, though, as we started off here. Race six on today's card. Uh, seven and a half furlongs on the turf for this non-winners of two lifetime uh, claiming event. The two, two-step temper, and the three, how you. I would imagine these two horses are going to be on a lot of people's tickets, and you have to use them protectively. Yeah, I mean, how you is turning back the seven and a half furlongs after surrendering that late lead to finish third, beating three quarters of length. It was against similar, was going a mile in the sixth. It's George Navarro. You know his exploits over this whole meeting. He's been doing a great job. Eddie Castro handling the turn back in distance. I like the turn back in distance, too. And now we saw Seuss, uh, a horse that he faced two starts back, come back to win quite nicely next out. So that seemed to be a pretty good for level race. And now on the cutback, I do think that they're going to get aggressive with this horse and go to the lead as they have been for several times in the past. So he is the horse to beat. The two two-step temper though does drop in class for trainer Mike Maker has kind of been uh, spinning his wheels behind $30,000 claimers, and now the blinkers go on to try to wake him up a bit. Kind of looks like a last-ditch effort trying to get this horse in the winner's circle, but again, he has been facing tougher company in the past two starts. And there's an uncoupled entry in here with the two, a two-step temper, also the nine, Madrus is the morning line favorite, trained by Mike Maker, but I want to hear about your seven horse that you have on top of the ticket. I do like the seven here for Lily Curtin, as because this is a horse who I've been kind of eyeing for the past couple of starts, and he just doesn't have any early speed. Now, you look at the, the rest of the field. Yes, the three how you has a tendency to have speed. The six tonight, tonight, I kind of liked him when he was still in the race because I thought he would pressure the early pace. But I like the fact that Nick Juarez picks up this mount. We saw him ride a horse, done one yesterday on the turf, and it was a picture-perfect ride. And he, he's a, a jockey that you kind of have to pay attention to, especially on the turf. He just needs a well-timed move, and I don't think in the past two starts he has been given the opportunity to get in the game earlier. Well, I'm talking about the ride and done one yesterday. He saved all the ground early, then shifted to the outside. So if he does that again with your seven horse, uh, got a good shot in there. You know, like I said, uh, well, we both had the two on a ticket, and I threw in Madruska, you know, Mike Maker, Javier Castellano handling the drop down in class today. Okay, race seven on the card does kick off our 50 cent late pick five, and you have a ticket, so let's see it. Walk us through it. Do you have a single? No. Okay. Could not find one today, but I got a six and 11 in race number six, uh, seven coming up, and that's uh, Midnight Dance in Bay Point Count. And then you go, you see two, three, and then two deep in race t uh, 10. Race 11, you see that four horse sitting there. That is my long shot today, 15 to one on the morning line. I just think that his horse can carve out a nice strip in there. We'll talk about uh, a little later on about that horse in race number 11 as the four pound sterling. So we'll see uh, if we can get that in $48 ticket. Okay, and race seven, as you said, does start us all off. And I'll get to uh, my top selection here in a second, but I thought that this was kind of difficult because you could make uh, solid cases for several horses, one of them having to break from the way outside post position. That is the 11 Bay Point Count, who if he runs back to his race when he faced similar company a couple starts back, he should be very tough. Yeah, he was beating the length at that level and distance back on December 11th. He's dropping. He failed to hit the board in a pair. That was $25,000 level, one on the dirt, one on the turf. Steve Town, Javier Castellano. That outside post is a concern. Uh, that is post 11 this afternoon. A couple of scratches to his inside might help this horse even more. And you also have the six midnight dance in there, who I... I just, uh, now with Mike Maker, uh, he, they claim this, we've seen this several times where they claim, they try him on the turf, they don't pan out, and then they drop him back down, hopefully, uh, to get claimed once again. 
that race, I thought, was one of the easier maiden, uh, lower-level maiden claimers that we've seen at the at the meet. Flowers for Lisa did come back to win her subsequent victory, but that gave me the ability to maybe shop for other horses. And the seven on attack, I loved this horse last time out. It didn't necessarily pan out, but <laughs> now that he's dropping back down to even a lower level, I'm going to stick with him once again today. He was uh, well bet by the public there when he made his local debut for uh, the previous connections, actually. He had some excuses last time out. I thought he just faced a little bit too tough of company. And if you get anywhere near eight to one on this horse, I love him. I got him on a ticket, too. I just couldn't go that deep on my ticket. Jane Savelli, Tyler Gaplione, uh, you know, sit behind a slow early pace last time out and finished fourth. And that was against $16,000 type. So dropping just a rung on the claiming ladder. The 10 Sky guy is uh, getting out of distance and sometimes change is a good thing. Whereas some of these other horses have been competing right. against the same company, the same distance. I just think he's going to improve a bit. We're now stretching out to the mile. Race eight on the card, though, another maiden claiming event, this time made in 40,000 onto the turf. The two living for love will go back and look at the most recent replay. And I think I was talking to you about this <laughs> horse. I loved this <laughs> horse that day. I singled him in my, uh, her, excuse me, I singled her in the pick six because I, it, the race two starts back here at Gulfstream. I thought it was a key four level race. Storm and Charlotte was in there first in brace. She got into so much trouble going into that mm -hmm. first turn. Here, she gets reserved mm -hmm. pretty much the entirety of the stretch, whereas the winner just had full momentum closing from the outside. And yes, she did go through a seam. She was game going through that seam, but how do you catch up with a horse when the number five horse, the eventual winner, just had so much momentum and she only really had got the chance to start running in the middle of the Yeah, stretch. I mean, she was just waiting in place until that seam did open up. So I'm totally agree with you. I have that one on top of my ticket too, and that's living for love. And the one Princess of Thieves is one here for trainer George Weaver, which we I found a stat here for the barn. And George Weaver uh, just does an absolutely fantastic job, whether here or New York, anywhere he goes. But with this particular layoff, 180-day-plus layoff with maiden claimers on the turf, 0 for 17. And I thought that was kind of an astounding stat. They don't run poorly. They finish second and third uh, quite often. Uh, but they just can't, it, it takes them a while to find the winner circle off of the layoff. So maybe that's a telling stat. Do what, take what you can from that stat. But there's some others in here. The six big wave Dave I threw in at a price uh, on the bottom half of my ticket. Kelly Rubley, she really does a, a great job and she acquires this horse for the first time. Had, did absolutely, absolutely no running last time out on the turf. But uh, how tough was that field? We saw Truly together. She looks like a very talented filly. Bridal fashion, Hudson, Ri Hudson River gal. These are allowance and even stakes quality types of fillies. And uh, I thought a significant drop today. Yeah, and uh, I, I did not use that one on my ticket this afternoon, but I did use the number five horse, and that is Bluegrass Special, making the third start of his current form cycle. If you're responding to a surface switch, I thought he ran good, late closing third uh, behind that horse. That was the same race, living for love. Scooter Dickey, Corey Lannery in the saddle. And uh, the other Sco Scooter Dickey horse, so the four Jane Wayne, want to throw up a quick stat here for the barn. This filly's got some nice turf pedigree on the bottom side, too, out of a Carson City mare. And now she gets added distance. And for what it's worth, the, the barn stretching out from sprints to routes on the turf, 18%. And they finish in the money quite often, and they're big prices. And this just seemed like a big price, 12 to 1 on the morning line with uh, Tyler Gaffleone, who I think will improve with distance. Race nine, we'll move on. We got a, still <laughs> a lot of ground to cover, not enough time. Six furlongs there on the main track, and we have the likes of the three Sweetwater coming back there, narrowly defeated behind April Gaze last time out. Yeah, game in defeat when she pressed the pace. Throughout was beaten at went second at this level in Safi Joseph Jr., Javier Castellano. And the six scoff in here for trainer Michelle Nevin. I didn't know what to do with this horse. It did, I didn't even know whether or not to use her <laughs> in the pick six because that was just such a scary performance last time out. She was one who opened up on the field by seven lengths prior to the claim under Eddie Pleases Barn. She was so impressive that day. 
maybe she's just a horse that needs the lead and because she didn't get off to a great start and she was chasing those early fractions, she just kind of packed it in. But I guess it's a vote of confidence that they do keep her at the same level and they keep protecting her. Yeah, and you know, she had some trouble. She hit the gate at the start. She had to steady going up the back stretch. She was five wide on the turn. King off that performance two back when she defeated those horses by seven plus lengths. Earns her a reprieve for me. The seven exchanging secrets is going to be my long shot in there. Finally getting back to a fast main track for Eddie Pleza. I, she was beaten by Island Sand against Allowance Optional Claiming Company. The top two, at least, finishers in that race are so improved by an off track that I thought that she didn't necessarily do her best running, but if she can duplicate her maiden performance, well, she should be tough at a decent price. We'll move on to the 10th race, though, a starter $50,000 race. A mile and a 16th on to the turf course and we keep saying this here, but uh, Todd Fletcher does have at least one shot today <laughs> on this 11 race program with the six Tybalt's queen uh, to try to get number 4,000. Yeah, I got him on my ticket here today, but I did go with the eight welcome speech. You're winning 50% of our local turf races. He's making a first start since splitting foes to defeat $50,000, two lifetime claimers. Uh, can we show that race? Because I thought it was yeah, really game. Absolutely. We'll go back and take a look at that. That was on the 23rd of December. And uh, she was. She was very visually impressive. Well, look at this. There's no room here. Watch this. She just gets through. I don't know where the room comes. Look at this. Just gets through the narrowest of openings to win it. Look at this. You know, a seven-horse blanket finish. I just thought it was a game performance. So uh, went back. She was able to hold on. What a great ride that was last time out. So uh, now gets Javier Castellano today. So I just think she has a game, game uh, chance to win today. That was one of the many excellent rides <laughs> that we saw Corey Landry yeah. give on the turf. He's had a handful, but that was definitely one that was impressive. And I took the same approach with this race that I thought uh, there's one speed horse that I think might be legitimate at a price. The five under the rain here uh, was went very fast last time out at Gulfstream. They went 22 and changed there for the opening quarter, and she was uh, pressured the entire way. She's fast again today, and I think she can hold on, but there's also a couple of horses who have a little bit of suspect speed, so with these deep dead-end closers, I think it might enhance them a little bit, like the eight welcome speech, and like the three, Carta Regia, first off the claim for Marcus Vitale. She was reserved the entirety of the stretch. Once she finally got room, she came with a late surge. She was just not that, not good enough that day, but she's going to get the pace, and the barn's really been doing so well lately. And uh, they teamed up with the jockey Nick Juarez, had a couple of wins yesterday, and we talked about his great run and done one. So uh, why not have that one on your ticket? And uh, three to one on the morning line. So uh, actually is the morning line favorite. And we'll move on to the 11th race on the card, a maiden $16,000 event, seven and a half furlongs onto the turf. And this is a tricky race to cap off the late pick five and the pick six too. I believe I used three horses, my top three selections there on the bottom of this, on the screen there, but the seven star of the Nile, I don't often use horses who are stretching out from five furlongs to the two turn seven and a half. I do think that she's going to improve. She's not a five furlong horse. Yeah, and she was, uh, her last race was validated when Value Baby uh, came. It was the next out winner in the race. Have her on top of my ticket. She's a daughter of Pioneer of the Nile, and I think she'll be part of the pacing area of stretching out today to this uh, seven and a half furlong distance. And if, yeah, I, I agree with you. You look at how she was running, and she was kind of making this slow grind type of run, and it just didn't look like she had that sprinter speed. You have to have that sprinter speed at five furlong. So two turns on the turf should be right up a rally. The 10 magnetic girl I threw in at a price. I, I didn't throw any stats up because they're kind of uh, it's not a big sample size but Terry Pompey does a great job with horses going dirt to turf the first time that she, uh, the first time trainer uh, stats. Now she didn't do any running in debut but this is a much easier field than what she faced. It's a much different turf course than the turf at Parks as well. So I'm using her at a little bit of a price. You threw in the two with a kiss at 10 to 1. Cutting back slightly after rallying five wide to finish second, beating the neck against similar going a mile. Leo Espira Jr., uh, Luis Contreras in the saddle today and ended it with number nine written in the stars. The eight sweet Medea is how I round off the top three there. And last time out did take that drop down to the maiden $16,000 level. Was the beaten favorite uh, behind Opie that day, but this Philly just unfortunately had to go so wide. There was nothing that Javier could have done about it because it was just a blanket of horses in front of him. Uh, but there was no beating the winner that day or the top two finishers mm -hmm. in that race. Uh, but if she can make an advancement off of that, I think she could be contentious here and maybe one to use. 
Should be decently bet, though, with Javier Castellano in the saddle. That's yep. races 1 through 11. You think we, we can find the pot of gold today? Yeah, ora mi gore. All right, well, uh, once again, we do have uh, no super high five wagering there in the first race. It does start in race two. There's no carryover in there, but unfortunately, there is a carryover there in the Rainbow Six. 3.5. $3.8 million that kicks off in race six. We're going to stop talking. Larry Colmas will be up shortly. And uh, best of luck on today's 11 race program. That's and happy Larry, Larry O. Colmas. Larry, Larry O. Colmas. Yes. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> <laughs> A best of luck here on this St. Patrick's Day program. Our day 